Hello, my name is Adrian Ficcioni and both Dr Barbero and I would like to thank the European College of Sports Science for the opportunity to joint present our topic, Performance Analysis and Technology in Team Sports at this Coaching and Performance Conference. I'll be giving an overview from each slide and Dr Barbero will elaborate where needed. The goal of this presentation is to take you through why technology is needed in elite team sport performance what is currently out there and available for coaches and sports scientists alike, and we would then like to introduce you to some of the latest technologies being developed and implemented in a variety of team sports around the world. We aim to show that through the appropriate implementation of sport technology, the player will have greater improvement, develop better skills, and sustain less overtraining injuries as a result. The acceptance of some of the latest technologies may require coaches to adopt different approaches to training regimes, but acceptance can lead to substantial improvements in the individual and team's performance. The game demands of all the major team sport games have improved substantially over the past three to five years. With greater intensity, higher running speeds, better tactics and skills resulting in the requirement of better prepared athletes for this competition domain. Unfortunately, many codes still suffer from antiquated training routines brought to these clubs through the hiring of coaches who are elite players in their time who often, but not always, apply their successful training principles of the 60s, 70s and 80s to the new team sport requirements of the 2000s. Now, we don't disagree that there are some aspects of sport history that is not only relevant but necessary, but so much has changed during this time that you are unable to do justice to a club team or players by not embracing the latest methods and technologies available to you. Even now the best coaches must resist blindly accepting what is already current in training modalities. It is very important that the boundaries are constantly being tested. This is what leads to sport progressing to new levels and new performance. In Australia for example, the National Rugby League program now has many coaches using the absolute latest in sport technology, GPS, altitude training, DNA testing, and this implementation has been reflected in players who are bigger, faster, more agile, with greater skills, and whom spend much less time on the sideline with injury than they did 20 years ago. It is this mindset that we are hoping will be adopted in all main team sport codes around the world. As we are all aware, there are at least four key aspects to sport performance, and it is vital that each is developed to the maximum of the player's ability if you wish to gain the most from those athletes in your programs. It is then the correct periodization of all these factors that results in elite performance. Excellent in any one factor alone will not guarantee success. A crucial area is that of loading and recovery, commonly stated as the periodization of training. There are many factors involved and the requirement to individualize for each player can put considerable strain on the available resources of a single club. It can be through the appropriate implementation of sports technology that more efficient periodization and individualization can be achieved without having to drastically increase support staff to implement these changes. The quantification of workload is just one of those variables that has, up until the recent availability of technology, been very subjective, resulting in a portion of players in any squad being undertrained, another group overtrained, and the remainder being applied the most appropriate stimulus to maximize their athletic development. Traditionally, team sport training has been time-based, but with the advent of technology to measure workloads, training can now be based on volume or intensity of effort rather than some, subject some subjective time period. This new paradigm does take some getting used to, but the results can be tremendous. The variables associated with workload alone are complex and varied. Ultimately, the elite team sports coach should take into consideration all of these variables in the daily, weekly and monthly planning of training routines for their players. We can break the key tasks down to three basic principles. Uh, firstly, the implementation of training routines that maximise the development of both physical and technical tactical objectives for both team and individuals. Second, we can determine the appropriate volumes and intensities built around a robust periodization strategy for each individual and the whole team. And thirdly, if you get close to achieving the first and second points, then you should see this reflected in the minimizing of injuries and off-field time. 
There are many examples in elite football where the implementation of many of these strategies have been directly correlated to a dramatic decrease, decrease in training injuries. We will now look at current technologies and the advances that are being made in these areas. A heart rate measurement has been around for some time, as we're all aware, but in the past three to five years, some very interesting and useful research has resulted in new ways of viewing your player's heart rate data. The two key areas uh, have been that of EPOC, or post-exercise oxygen consumption, and the RR, or heart rate variability. Now these two variables have allowed the coaches to gain much greater insight into how a player is adapting to training during the actual sessions, as well as their rate of recovery between sessions and from week to week. We see future development will include moving away from the standard chest strap, the bane of most athletes around the world, with smaller and smarter detection methods that will be applied around the body, such as examples of uh, measurement through the ear or finger or on other places that uh, become less of an irritation to the players. VO2 or oxygen uptake by itself really has limited application, but in conjunction with uh, say GPS data, blood analysis data and video really allows the coach to glean much greater functional information from the players during any training cycle. Uh, we see future advancements will really include the accurate measurement of VO2 without requiring the measurement of gas exchange. Uh, this may be possible through the implementation of a combination of heart rate and loading outputs as might be measured by an accelerometer. This really will allow us to start to view performance data in a real game situation rather than having to have a person on a treadmill in a lab or having to wear some unusable device as can be seen uh, in this particular slide. Video analysis and the use of a variety of programs now have really seen an exponential improvement in how teams conduct themselves during a game. Again, we see future development in this area includes real-time video and statistics being streamed to the coach's box during a game, which is already happening in a number of codes around the world. The integration of GPS and other biometric data with video, and then software that can data mine the vast amount of information recorded in each match to evaluate advanced tactical and technical aspects of each competitor for future matches. There are a range of software packages now available that combine video with statistics. Many clubs in Australia have software licenses for every player in the club so that 24 hours after a game, each player is able to log in, view their own performance, video, statistics, biometrics, allowing them to learn from what they did in the previous day's game. Also, this gives them greater insight into why the follow-up tactical training sessions are being run as they are. Uh, we really see that greater education from coach to player results in a smarter team, better cohesion and ultimately superior results. A new package that we are involved with will combine the best of video, statistics, GPS and biometric data into a single comprehensive analysis package. This system is currently under development but will bring a whole new way a coach and player can analyse what they did and how to improve on prior performances. In the gym environment, we will see improvements in the data being made available to coach an athlete in real time. Through the use of portable force plates, accelerometer technology and wireless systems, the coach will be able to view in real time the force time profiles of their athletes during each repetition completed. Now this information can be made available through a screen uh, directly to the athlete allowing them to make real time adjustments to their technique to maximise strength or power output. Elite training academies like Aspire and Qatar are looking at developing a real-time wireless network throughout their entire centre, allowing athletes anywhere in the complex to be monitored and evaluated real-time if required. Advantages are that once the athlete has finished their session, by the time they have showered and made their way back to whether it be somewhere to eat or in fact to review their data, it's been processed and is available for viewing. The availability of real-time feedback will accelerate performance improvement across the board.